Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man. <clears throat> and as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. I'm going to entitle this video. This is the reason why this bass is going back. Because I just received the bass today. And like I told you guys, when I get something and it doesn't pass my inspection, it goes back. I don't try to pine it off on you guys or I'm getting rid of it. Because here's something interesting and I'm going to get back at this topic at hand. I'm looking on eBay. And I'm looking at a recorder that I had. It's called a Tascam 688. I've written a lot of great hits on that on that that uh, <clears throat> uh, recorder. And I was just curious because I'm like, I'm not buying another one. How much are they going for now? Because they were pretty high because of their collector's items. And this company in Japan was selling one on eBay. And in parentheses, before it describes what it is, it said in parentheses, junk. And it's at the Tascam 688, and apparently it's not working. They want $500 for it. <clears throat> and I just had to send them a message. I'm like, would you pay $500 for some junk? So why should we? You know, some things you just got to throw away. You know, or at least significantly reduce the price so someone can fix it. Because I'm like, why would I pay $500 for something that ain't working? You know, as opposed to... $200 or $199 and it needs servicing and I can put the extra money on to get it fixed and bring it back to almost 100% working condition. It's still a $500. You're getting junk. You know, so I just don't understand that. But uh, I do these type of videos here because I want the beginners or anybody to realize what to look for in a guitar when you buy one and what definitely look for when you don't want to buy this one. And before I show it to you, uh, it's beautiful. You know, that's what caught my eye. It's unique. It's custom. It looks good. It actually feels good. It has a great neck on it. Tone is good. Strings, uh, the gauge is pretty good. And I asked the guy, I said, you know, first and foremost, especially when it comes to bass, I'm like, how's the action? Because I like low action. I'm not a fan of high action bass guitars. And he said, I quote, it's very good low action. All around good guitar, quote unquote. So... It came today, and what I noticed was there's some people, they're not musicians, and they're just selling something that they got to hold to, and uh, they can't give you an honest description of it, because I don't think that he was trying to deceive me. I kind of got a vibe through our interactions that he's a pretty honest guy, but he's a guy that don't know what he's selling, you know? So I'm going to just show it to you, and then I'm going to continue my, I guess overall review of this. <clears throat> okay, so he told me so he told me that uh no, it was the action was low. Action is pretty high. I mean, it's 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 not even the standard is pretty high, you know. And I'm like, it feels like the pink guitar that I got from J Jay Terser, and action on that is pretty high, but it has a really great tone. I only paid like sixty bucks for it, so I'm like, I'm not complaining. You know, you get what you get for what you pay for. So, action pretty high, and then I'm like, okay. What disturbs me first and foremost, and this was not mentioned in the description, you know, as you're playing it. From like the 14th fret on down on the uh, AD, ADG strings. Dead notes. It's real fucked up. So this wasn't even set up, you know, and this was not as described in the description. Said nothing about uh, it's buzzing down there, and it's not an extreme fix, you know. I can't raise up the action, but that's the problem. I gotta raise up the strings even more, and they already high to get this buzzing to go away. And I said, well, you know what? It was this one particular song I was going to do a cover on when the new bass came. So I said, uh, let me try it out and see how it sounds. 
And oddly enough, the very first bass note in the song is way down here on the D string. So I'm like, I can't even use this. So also what I noticed was I said, you know what? Maybe I can do a little truss rod adjusting. This one don't have a truss rod. Out of all the guitars I've ever played, basic guitar, I've never ran across a guitar. And maybe the extremely cheap guitars, toy guitars, but I'm talking about a regular standard, uh, functionable uh, guitar. You know, a standard guitar. Not a, Again, not a toy guitar for kids. I've never seen one without a truss rod. You know, there's, there's nothing up here. There's nothing down here because normally they're either here or they're there. And this guitar has not one. So that means you cannot straighten out the neck when it starts to bow. And I think it has bowed a little bit. So I contacted the guy immediately. I said, uh, I'm pretty disappointed because per our conversation, and I even cut and paste his quote. You know, I said, uh, I asked you about the action and was it low? And then I put the quote in there. Uh, it's real good. It's good and low. And it's a, over, overall a good guitar. That is not true, you know. And I'm like, okay, well, I might consider keeping it because it's custom. And it feels good. I mean, the neck on this bass feels great. And the tone. And actually, uh, the strings, you know, the, the bridge and how it's set up, it's not real stiff to anything. It's just kind of high. So I'm like, you know, well, maybe I can work with it. But when I realized there was no truss rod to adjust, and in order to get rid of all this down here, I would have to raise the strings up even higher. And if I did that, it definitely won't even be playable at this point. So again, I contacted the guys. I'm pretty disappointed because for our conversation, you said it was low. It's high. And then I would have to crank it up even higher to get rid of all this dead notes down here on all these strings. So, uh... He was quite gracious because, again, you know, from my initial interaction with him, I, I felt he was being honest. He just didn't know because you got people now that they selling stuff on Reverb and eBay. They don't know what they're selling. They're not musicians. They're not selling stuff they used to use themselves because I remember asking another guy on eBay. I was like, how's the action? And he kind of got around it. He gave me kind of just generalization or general answer. And I asked him, I said, again, I said, how was the action? You just have to be honest. I don't even know what that means. Thank you and have a good day. You know? So I'm like, I can't. And the same thing with this guy. I believe he's not a guitar player or bass player. He got a hold of something. And then he just sold it. And uh, I'm just really surprised that it came all jacked up. You know, because sometimes you get guitars that are kind of high in action. But at least all the way up and down the fretboard, it's ringing out notes. But all down is down here. And I know what this is because I've, I've seen this before. Somebody has taken the neck off. I don't know what they tried to do down there because there has no trust rod. And when they put it back, you got all this. In order to get rid of all of this, you got to go ahead and, 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 and raise the saddle. I mean, you got to raise it considerably. You know, so uh, I paid like two ninety for this. And to me, this guitar and the condition it's in is worth about $99. Because I'm like, okay, if I got it for 99 bucks, I won't complain about all down here because I just won't be playing all down here. But when you're paying $285, you expect it, unless otherwise noted, something that's going to be playable out the box. So when I contacted him and told him that, he was like, and I said, I'm sending this back for a refund, for a refund. He said, okay, I don't have a problem with that. And he actually did something that I think only one other person ever done. They immediately refunded my money even before I packed up the guitar to send it back. So I, I greatly appreciate it, and that lets me know he's a man of on, honesty and integrity. So, you know, once I get the uh, prepaid label sometime tomorrow, because he said he got to contact Reverb to, to figure out how to get that done. I said, not a problem, you know. So, uh, you know, again, it's I, I like it. I mean, it, it looks beautiful, you know. But there's some issues with it, and it's definitely not wor worth what I paid. And I said to myself, you know, whenever I get guitars, there are times, there's going to be a time when I'm going to most likely part with them and sell them. And it's not that there's nothing wrong with the ones that I keep and play and, and sell. It's just that uh, I get more in and I told myself that when I get one in, one has to go. You know, so I can't keep stockpiling all these guitars all over the place. I'm like, I enjoyed it. It feels good. And I got to pass it on to the next person. 
you know, but uh, with this one, I would not be able, I wouldn't be able to have, I wouldn't, with a, without a conscious, was try to sell this to somebody. Because again, I don't, that, that's not how I roll. You know, I don't get something that's jacked them low. Maybe I'll give it to some other dude. No, I'm just sending it back. You know, because uh, everything that I sell you guys is coming out the box to play. Unless otherwise noted. And normally, it's never another otherwise noticed. If it came to me jacked up, it's going back. You know, so uh, I just thought I would share that with you guys as far as what to look for when you're purchasing a used guitar. And what to look for when you're purchasing a new guitar to say, no, this ain't going to work for me. Because uh, I tend to prefer to have my bass guitars in extremely great condition or brand new. And then I tell them what I want before they ship it to me brand new. You know, I, I've ordered two guitars off of Reverb bass guitars, and they were brand spanking new. I told them, like, I want my action real low. And they both, I got you. And when they like, it came here, they got me. They had me. It's like, okay, these guitars feel great, you know. But, again, I'm going to sign off now. But, again, I just thought I would post this for the beginner. Just buying guitars, you know, make sure that you get something that feels good for you to play. First and foremost, it's not about what it looks like. Whose name up here, where it came from, what type of wood you got on there, none of that nonsense. Does it feel good? And this one actually feels pretty decent in spite of the, the, the slightly high action. You know, but again, the dead stuff. I'm like, okay, dude. Nobody even bothered to set this guitar up properly, at least to play, before they shipped it off. So, uh, I'm going to sign off now, but I just thought I would, uh, I post, you know, post this video. Because, again, I, I like it. It's beautiful. Feels good. You know, the, I don't know what gauge strings they are, but uh, really good. But I've never seen a bass guitar or any guitar other than a toy. And I mean, of, literally, other than a toy that didn't have a uh, truss rod. There's no way that you can adjust the neck on this thing. Unless, and I don't even think that might be the case. That might be where if you took it off, and that's maybe why they took it off, it might be down under there, but I've never seen them down under there because you usually have in the pit guard space to stick that Allen wrench to adjust it. So uh, this is quite unusual, but um, it's going back. Talk to you guys later. Take care.